to the Smithfield House in Provo, Utah for men's volleyball on BYU TV. Tonight it's a rematch from last night between the eighth-ranked Hawaii Warriors and the third-ranked BYU Cougars. Hello everyone, I'm Jerem Jordan alongside Steve Bale. Last night the Cougars looked impressive getting their 15th win of the season against Hawaii. In sweeping fashion, the Cougars hit 522. They'll hope to do that tonight. Yeah, they came out and played amazing volleyball. A lot of fire, a lot of intensity. They served better than I've seen them serve in years. Fell asleep a little bit in the third, but came back and crushed them. The Cougars jumped out early, 25-18 with the first set victory, and then 25-20, 25-22. Hawaii hit 263. BYU, like we mentioned, sizzling at 522, and the opposites really came to play for both. Yeah, they did. Both opposites leading their teams. Jonas with 18 kills, hitting in the 300s. And Robbie Stowell with 14 to lead the Cougars, hitting 722. In the MPSF standings, USC, Stanford, and then BYU and Hawaii. They were tied for third last night. The Cougars in sole possession of third. And then UC San Diego last night in a non-conference game. A big win, the biggest of the night in the nation. Beat Ohio State, snapped their 17-game win streak. Well, for Hawaii, the top hitter in the country at 5.46 kills per set is Jonas Umlauf. Yeah, Jonas has had 62 kills in his last three matches. He's playing phenomenal volleyball. They're going to need him again tonight, big time. For BYU, the opposite on their side, Rob Stowell led them in victory. Yeah, again, 14 kills, hit 722 in 18 swings, only had one error. The guy was just lights out last night. BYU with all sorts of options, and they brought it last night. In fact, the Cougars have been great, especially at home, 7-0 on the year, five sweeps. And we'll see if the Cougars and electrifying freshman Taylor Sander can lead them to victory against Hawaii again. BYU versus Hawaii, coming up next. Hawaii is 12 and 10 overall, 10 and 7 in conference in fourth place, 4 and 5 on the road. Here are their starters for the evening. We mentioned Umloft, talented opposite. The outside hitters are Josh Walker and Stephen Hunt. Nate Zemiak is the Slovenian setter. Jared Lofi getting the start at middle blocker. And Shane Welch for Big Red, the other middle blocker. And Nick Costello is the libero. Charlie Wade is the coach in his second season. 31 and 20 at the helm there, assisted by Daniel Fisher and Jeff Hall. BYU is 15 and 7 overall, 11 and 6 in conference in third place, 7 and 0 at home. They've won 12 of their last 13, and these are the starters. Number 13, Rob Stowell from San Juan Capistrano, California. Number 23, Alex Dupron from Valley Center, California. Number 15, Taylor Sander, Norco, California. Number eight, Joe Kaliakamoa from Las Vegas, Nevada. Number two, Quentin Smith, Sandy, Utah. Number 17, Puti Tavana, Kalahale, Hawaii. Number 18, BJ Hiapo from Gilbert, Arizona. It's Hawaii, Tavana is Hawaiian. Hiapo is Hawaiian as well, has an extended family that still lives there, and of course, Tavana with his legion of fans in the islands as well. Stowell, the opposite, outside hitters to front, Sander, Kelly Akamoa, the setter, and Quentin Smith getting his fourth career start. BYU is coached by interim head coach Rob Nielsen. First year, 15 and 7, assisted by Mike Daniel and Chris McGowan. Miley Jukes is the up official tonight. Mike Farish is the down as BYU gets announced to the crowd. Going with the home white top, blue shorts. Hawaii mixing it up from the greens last night, going all black. And it should be a fun match once again tonight. You see some of the more dynamic hitters in the conference. And Umloft and Walker, will Hunt bring it? Can uh, Hawaii have a middle attack, which Charlie Wade said, we really need to establish the middle, and we'll see about that. Well, the third member of our broadcast team is Aaron Nielsen. Aaron. Yeah, Jer, I'm talking to both coaches pregame. They both said they need to execute better defensively, but also on the errors. Actually, sorry, on the service. There were too many service errors by Zemliak for Hawaii. Coach Wade said that he's normally above 90%, but for some reason last night he had four service errors, and that's just uncharacteristic. It's not the elevation. That wasn't his problem, so he needs to do that better. But mainly, both defensively want to do it, and Coach Wade for Hawaii said we can't. we got to give him more of a challenge in the beginning. It was too little too late, the push we made the second game into the third, so hopefully we can hit him from the start. Back to you. Thanks a lot, Aaron. Series history is owned by the Cougars. 
28 to 17, 17 and 13 in Provo. That's pretty good for Hawaii in this building. And the home match, uh, home team has won every match since 2006. So home court huge in this series. So Zemiak will serve for Hawaii and BYU. And night two is always interesting to see how the other team comes out having served tonight, having seen what BYU has to offer, and most of the time having lost. Yeah, BYU, they're looking to start real hot right now with, uh, with a good pass and get their offense going right away, just like they did last night. Good wow. pass from DePron on the good serve. And Stowell starts quickly. Rob Stowell, the bombshell, as they call him sometimes. Uh, I know they've got a sign here, Rob Bombshell. Stowell. We'll have a story from Aaron Nielsen at this intermission about Rob. Could be fun. That was a great serve right off the bat. And Alex DePron, just a dime of a pass and a great kill for the Cougars to start off the night. Steve, the first swing comes up the middle and the second. They really want to establish that, like Charlie Wade said. Yeah, that was a big thing for them last night. I think that really hurt them because everything kind of runs from that. If you can establish your middle fast and early, that opens everything else up. They had no middle attack last night, and BYU just owned them. They had one kill, and they set the middle blockers a total of four times. So they come out right now and get one. Service error from Walker. Walker struggled last night, four service errors. Zemiak had four as well. Those are the top two guys from the service line for the Warriors. Here's Rob Stowell. And Stowell out. BYU was really good through the first two sets with just six service errors, but then eight in the third last night for a total of 14. 2-2. Two -two. Yeah, they served real tough early on and kind of iced themselves a little bit later. Here's Brennan Dyer, who was the starter for most of the season, and he serves out, so three combined from both teams. Sprained his ankle a couple of weeks ago, hadn't really seen much action, and the last night came in off the bench. Didn't have a huge impact, but tonight Charlie Wade going with Dyer to start. Sander bombs away, Walker passed it. Umloft off of Tavana. Jonas Umloft, if you didn't watch last night, this guy leads the nation in kills per set. Not the flashiest hitter, but is very intelligent in the way that he plays the game. It helps that he's 6'9 and uses it effectively. No, seriously, and we talked a little bit last night about how smart of a hitter he is, and he's just lead, starting off right where he left off last night. <laughs> Coming up, no chance for the other team. Almost unfair. Yeah, Umlauf just kind of during the headlights as the blocker went one way and he was stuck all alone trying to dig that ball. He didn't even bend down all the way. <laughs> it just got Pat, watch, watch. It just, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, he's like, I have no helmet and this is scary. <laughs> no helmet. <laughs> Bick to Walker, dug up. And Walker with a violation on the three meter line. He was on the back row and touched the line coming over. Yeah, those players, uh, you know, it's amazing. They'll get within, I mean, just millimeters of that line. They hit that ball so much, but every once in a while that toe will cross over and that's a violation. Oh, wow, a little bit of a chicken wing pass there. Umlaut blocked by Clinton Smith. Yeah, Hunt got a little bit, uh, a little bit handcuffed there on that pass. BYU knows where that set's going, set up early and clamp that ball. Just Smith's 13th block of the year because this is his 14th set played. Ooh, that was pretty deep. Umloft again, you give him any kind of window and he's got a chance. That one went out, but certainly had the window of opportunity. Point Cougars 7-3. Yeah, that was a little bit of a low set. You give him another foot, I think he still would have beat the block. There was a huge seam there, but because it was so low, absolutely uh, hit that ball out of bounds. Hunt pass and then hit and he gets it. Stephen Hunt, the junior from Toronto, hitting 250 on the season, third we, in kills on the team. Who we affectionately nicknamed last night Red Two. Cut the chatter, Red Two. Can't say Little Red because this guy gets up and hammers balls. Woo! Speaking of, Vic from the back row by Taylor Sander, the freshman. That was an awesome swing from Taylor Sander. 
the BIC, which is the quick back row attack, right off of the middle. No block. And wow, oh, there's a shank of a pass there. And Hunt sets it over for the free ball. Back row again, and this time, Welch with the solo block. Big Red with his sixth solo block of the year. Almost surprised himself by his reaction. Look at that, he actually went up with the middle and just hung and was still up there when Taylor came off that. Let's play by Welch. Uh, well, the red curtain connects and BYU into the net. Wait, jump ball. Confused by the call here. I think, uh, only I can think that happened is he called that net, but it's not a net unless it's on the top of the net. Why and stop the play? Well, because he blew the whistle, so the player stopped. Oh, yeah, okay. Thank you. <laughs> Still off the shoulder, and that one into the front row. A little bit of shrapnel just beyond the Kevlar. That was a nice swing there. Return to sender. <laughs> Still well with two. The prawn right at Walker. BYU targeting him again. And Walker blocked by Stowell. That wasn't a perfect pass. I think he could have forced the middle, but wanted to go outside instead, and BYU all over it. 10-5, BYU in set number one. Stowell giving Walker some shingles. Wow, look at Rob Stowell. Well, the Cougars have been dominant at home, like we mentioned, undefeated on the year, 12 of their last 13. And BYU has run through the table this season against some pretty good opponents. It started with Irvine. BYU got a couple of sweeps there, impressively, and then UCLA, one and four, and then three. And then a couple weeks later against UC San Diego, taking down the Tritons in five, and one where BYU almost blew it, held on, then got the sweep Saturday, and then last night, the Cougars got there. BYU so dominant at home because one, they're a good team, and two, the elevation certainly helps, and three, you get big crowds. Yeah, huge crowds here, biggest venue on the tour, if you can call it a tour. Yeah, BYU, lots of advantage here. You go back through uh, through 06 and look at BYU, 66 and nine. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty good, right? I think so. <laughs> they campaigned last year with uh, posters to protect the Smith Field House, and so fans would come in wearing shirts with the protector on the front. I have one. My good friend Dave Everhart hooked me up a couple weeks ago, and I wear it proudly. Is it underneath your dress shirt right now? Yeah. Of course it is. The Tron with the service there. It's a good timeout by Hawaii. Icing Alex there and serving that into the middle of the net. Second service there for BYU. Two apiece, both teams. Uh, Josh Walker, only two sets so far. Two errors hitting negative 1,000. They need to get him going. Zemiak went soft to Pron. First pass, and there was Smith. It's kind of a different look from the Cougars right there. Smith. Not set a ton, able to get that kill. Actually hitting 444 in the 14 sets he's played. Yeah, it's a great hitting percentage. They are so deep at the middle position. They set Dyer again. No one blocked. Tavan out with those soft hands. Sander with the cut shot, and Costello can't, couldn't dig it. That's so great. It's great to see Taylor Sander just go up and get that. Look how high that set is. Great cut there, hard, hard angle away for the block and the defense. Automatic. The hitting percentage disparity is obvious, wow. wow. Umlauf says, let's make that a positive number right now. It's a nice cross court there. Umlauf with two kills. He needs six to get a thousand for his career become the 13th player in Hawaii history to do that. Sander. 
Wow. Hitting air. No. That was uh, off the block and out of bounds. Oh, thank you. Well, join the conversation if you have a question or comment. Email us at tvsports at byu.edu. That's tvsports at byu.edu. So 13-7 in set one. Sander, three kills on four swings. Hunt blocked. Zemiak right there. Dyer up. Hunt again over the top of the block. <laughs> and Kelly Akamoa tried to dump it, and Hunt was right there. Yeah, he, he read that. Super easy play for him to read there. They actually had two blockers up on that dump. Hawaii trying to hang around. 8-13. Great pass from Taylor. Tavana blocked. Back-to-back -back blocks. And Welk shakes his head as in, yeah, we got this. Let's do it. And now they have three blocks, Steve. They didn't have a single block in the first set yesterday. Yeah, they... Uh, they said one for the match. Yeah, they're... They've come together a little bit. I think they're they're a little bit more accustomed to what BYU is going to try and do, and so maybe they're not uh, as far behind the curve as they were last night. Stowell had to tip it. Easy dig for Dyer. Umlaut, cut shot wow. and in. What a hit. Wow, that was a great turn there to the hard angle. I think everybody thought that was going out, including me, but he's so big. There's not a play he can't make with that size and, and smart. Right. Yapo, good pass. Tavana right at Zemiak, went back over. A great free ball pass from the middle. Sander blocked again. Hawaii putting up a much tougher front against BYU. Triple blocked. Anum loft. The pick uh -huh. from Walker. 13-11. Rob Nielsen up. He wants a timeout. Wow, look at Hawaii, they came to play. Josh Walker, the senior from Virginia Beach, makes the Cougars pay. Cougars up by two in set one. You're watching BYU versus Hawaii on BYU TV. Middle blocker Rusty Lavaya uh, had off-season shoulder surgery, didn't recover in time to be able to get back and uh, the season is a red shirt and you see a kind of a new arm sling and brace for him there his labrum did not attach to his bone very well following that surgery and so he had surgery again has it iced up and everything you see here tonight and uh, he says he'll be good by by August when they start training again but uh, best of luck to rest in his recovery as his middle blocking counterpart Kuti Tavana records his third kill on his fifth swing. Levi would make a big difference on this team. Oh he really would I mean you know as good as Smith has been Levaya is just so big. I mean, he's almost another Futi. I mean, they're so big. They just clog that middle up in such a, a big way. Wow. Look at that pass, though. From Costello. Awesome stuff. And Hunt got the tip. And that one up. And Tavana over. And Umlaf puts it away. That was the easiest kill Umlaf's ever had. He spiked that off of Dupron's chest. Dupron just trying to get in the way of that ball. And all seven on the right side of the court, and that leaves the Germinator free to do this. Look at Alex, man, taking one for the team. Can you see the ooh? Like, <laughs> I didn't it. even feel that. Ah, uh, sub. <laughs> <laughs> Umlauf with four kills and one dig. Wow. Nice serve. Defrano fans it out. Nicely done. What a great swing from Alex Defrano. That ball was a little bit tight, coming from all the way across his body, and just able to turn that line off the block. Wow. Timeout on the court. Defrano's a great story because he went to Irvine, was a redshirt during their national championship year. Ends up going to the White House, takes a picture with President Bush because he's part of the national champions there. You know. He eventually transfers to uh, BYU and uh, converts to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and has enjoyed his time here. He's engaged and uh, on his way to uh, helping BYU and is a captain. He's a junior and has done a nice job for the Cougars. Yeah, a great player and a great guy, too. Just so easy to talk to, just a fun guy. He's really, uh, he's, he's been a great addition to this team. They're lucky to have him. 
Well, prior to last night, the Warriors had won six matches in a row. They ran through Pepperdine and Pacific, and most impressively was on the road at the beach, getting a couple of wins there. Climbed up to eighth in the rankings. That's the second highest they've been since week one. And uh, BYU snapped that last night. But the Warriors have really turned the program up just a notch to where they're a bit more competitive than they have been. Oh, they have. Uh, yeah, they're, they're playing great. I mean, last night, I think, was so uncharacteristic of how they played the past couple of months. I think it shocked them all that they, they all of a sudden weren't hanging with one of the top teams in the nation. And, you know, BYU is business as usual, but I'm, I'm sure Hawaii came away from that saying, okay, we got to make some changes. And they're playing better tonight. Let's toss it out to Aaron Nielsen on what BYU talked about in their huddle. Yeah, Jeremy. Coach Nielsen said, now it's our turn. It's our turn to get some blocks here and make a run. It is our turn. He said, good job on the service and the blocking. It's getting better. But they still want to establish more of an offense. They don't feel like that's cohesive right now, and, and they want to spread it out to a few more people to see how that goes. Back to you. Okay, thank you. As Joe Kelly Akamoa spreads it to himself with the dump, though, I think. I'll get us going. Yeah, that was, uh, I think he was waiting for someone to contest that dump, and he was going to beat him in the joust, but there was nobody there, so he just, boop, right there in the middle of the court. Six Cougars have a kill with Kelly Akamoa's kill right then. Wow. Cross-court set to the back row, off the block into the antenna. I'm trying to think of how far, how much farther you can stretch the court. Then. Yeah, it's almost surprising how often he goes back to Jonas, but then time and time again, he gets it done. So, I mean, I'd shoot. I'd keep throwing the ball to him, too. Smith in between Hunt and Costello, 17-13. Wasn't a bullet, but it was a kill. Two for two for Smith. Doing a nice job there, hitting kind of away from where his body was going. Took a little bit off it, but found that seam and drove through it. And a whiff, but it went over. You can hardly see that. Welch blocks it. Dupron backs it to Stowe, really low, and he's blocked, but out. He already got away with one there. Yeah, he snuck that through the block. I thought it got blocked too. Hard to tell. Their bodies were in our, were in our way, but. Uh, yeah, somehow he got that through. I don't know if Walker was just enough off the tape that he snuck it through or what, but uh, great swing there. Nice up by Alex as well. A one-armed bandit. Walker, Josh Walker with two kills on four swings. He has two hitting errors. The last two have been successful hitting triple zeros now. I was seriously surprised by that set. I thought for sure he's gonna chuck it all the way across the court to Umlauft for the 5,000th kill of the night. Troy Crutchfield in, a defensive specialist from Long Beach, transfer from Long Beach Community College. They nicknamed him Crutch. Quickly to Smith with the left hand, wise play, dug up. Crutchfield over. Stowell. BYU, Hawaii's giving themselves opportunities, keeping that ball in the air. BYU in the end, just too much to handle. Still well with a team high four kills on seven swings. Hitting 571. Boom locked. And that went off the antenna. With some guys, their athleticism, they're able to get that uh, as opposites like Stowell does. It doesn't matter if he's on the back row or not when they set him. But with Umlauf, he could seriously be five feet farther back, and it would not be a problem on his swing. The guy oh, is the guy is scraping the net with that six foot nine frame after he jumps in the back row. <laughs> well, tune in tomorrow, Steve, for Steve Vale, right? Nice. Yeah, of course. Tune in, I had fans. Tune in tomorrow for rugby <laughs> as the top-ranked team in the nation, the BYU Cougars, take on the Colorado State Rams at the stadium at Southfield. Watch it live at 1 p.m. Mountain Time on BYU TV. We are BYU Sports. BYU has a very entertaining team. If you've never watched rugby, tune in. Should be a lot of fun tomorrow. Number one BYU in action in our only rugby broadcast of the season. The match high for kills right now is Jonas Umloft with six or with five on nine swings, hitting 222. Three errors there. 
And Hawaii hitting 182, BYU keeping up the clip like last night, hitting 455 early. Yeah, they're just, I mean, they're absolutely avoiding this Hawaii block really well. Like they're they're hitting at will against these guys. And Hawaii's got to find a way to slow them down. Got an email from Kevin Castle. Says, love the broadcast, guys, but when when will BYU TV start broadcasting volleyball and other programming in HD? We're broadcasting in HD over the air right now, meaning if you don't have cable or satellite, you can actually get it. It's 11.2. And uh, BYU TV HD is currently being negotiated with uh, several TV outlets. They have to choose to pick it up. When you have HD, there, you have a certain amount of bandwidth for certain channels, and so these companies have to choose to add BYU TV. The best way that you can help on an individual basis is to call and request it yourself. It's anticipated that several will pick it up uh, in time for football, as BYU will offer a lot more sports, and uh, should be exciting to uh, be able to see it at its highest capacity. Service Air 2115, thanks for the email from Kevin. If you have an email you want to send in, a question or comment, we'd love to hear from you. Email tvsports at byu.edu. That's tvsports at byu.edu. Jeff Robinson into the game to serve. Six foot four senior from Las Vegas. Goes right at Costello, not a great pass. Umloft, way out of system, off the triple block and down. Wow. <laughs> Hardly anyone else in the country can do what you just saw right there. That's nuts. Umloft, where are you? Here it comes. He knows. He's ready. He'd be over on the bench, get a drink of water, and he'd still put it away. Got a long-winded email from our trivia question answer yesterday. Tyler Whittison. Yo, Steve! <laughs> That's all he said. Hey, I don't have time to read such long emails, Tyler. <laughs> Noel through the block of Dyer and Hunt. Tyler, the one that got the answer right, has a, is it seven foot vertical? I can't remember, but it's pretty high. Six foot tall middle blocker, and he's gnarly. Now you're just getting crazy. No, that's that's legit. The, that last part was true. His, his vertical is only like six and a half feet. Umlaw, Sander, over in time. Stowell! Wow. Hawaii just got robbed. Great swing in the opposite. Jonas, but picked up by BYU and Rob Stowell doing what he do. The kill down the line. Right at Hunt. Hunt blocks it out. Stephen Hunt, second kill on his fifth swing. 23-17. It's a great swing off the big block from BYU. Hunt's got a nice shoulder. That hits an angry ball. Dyer, one of the three seniors. Someone's tied on the net and awkward the entire way. Because Kelly Akamoa got blocked and then it hit Tavana. 23-18. BYU well in front again in this first set. Should be able to coast to the victory here. And of course, as soon as I say that, boy, I'll rattle off five in a row or something. Yeah, just wait till they hit 25, <laughs> right? Set point, 24-18 on Tavanaugh's third kill on five swings. Cougars hitting 520. Wow. The Hawaiian scores on Hawaii. If Hawaii had like a big block, they would seriously be gnarly. That's that's the one part where they struggle is they just they can't seem to get in front of BYU. Hunt blocks, but out. Hunt with back-to-back -back kills. 24-19, crowd on their feet. Between uh, Hunt, Walker, and Umlauf, they've got quite a bit of offense and they can sprinkle in some middle attacks as well. But boy, they just need to be bigger on the defensive side. Oh, oh no, speaking of the devil. 24-19, four blocks for Hawaii. Meanwhile, BYU is the top team in the country in blocks per set, but they're being blocked by two right now. Big red. Able to line up with Foodie on that last ball. He's got two block assists and a solo block. 
The prawn out. Oh, they're getting a touch. Oh, they got a touch. So point BYU and set to BYU. 25-20. Cougars win set one and Welch frustrated. And you see Sam Biscaro. He's saying that the, the hitter came underneath. What do you think? Hard to tell from there, but I bet he did. Cougars win it by five. We'll be back in a moment with more volleyball on BYU TV.